Hi, and welcome to this new video where I'm going to start a series on semantic kernel. In this video, I'll show you the very basic of semantic kernel, how to configure the service and how to direct call a large language model. As usual, to store all your key, all your API key, everything that is a secret, I'm using a simple .env file, like in Python. So I have a file called .env in which I have a simple syntax to store the API key. This file will be stored in a parent folder aside from the Git repository. So I'm sure that, that my secrets are safe. And now let's jump into the code. To make everything simple, I'm using Visual Studio Code and Polyglot Notebook. So you can have a file with extension dip, you can install the polyglot, not, the polyglot Notebook extension. So you can write C Sharp as you write Python in Notebook. It's, it's very, very simple. And the first block is simply importing another code file that is in the parent directory. This is a simple library of mine that it's used to load the .m file, as I told you before. And then I'm going to import some um, some nugget packages I'm using, and it's semantic kernel and other some basic uh, packages. Then after you install the packages, it came the configuration of semantic kernel. As you can see, configuration is really, really simple. You create a builder, and the builder has a service section when you start adding your configuration. And in this time, I'm adding, first of all, logging. And this allows me to output log of internal execution of semantic kernel. It's uh, interesting, especially when you start working with semantic kernel because it gives you a uh, good insight of what is happening inside uh, semantic kernel itself. And then I'm going to add my first service. It's an Azure OpenAI open, open service. And this is uh, going to uh, configure the chat complexion. So I'm configure a chat model for interacting with a large language model. And then I'm going to specify everything of my deployment and, and GPT-4, oh, uh, it will be the name of my model. And I start uh, looking at uh, the .m file to load the base API key, uh, the base um, directory, the, the base URL, the OpenAI key, and then the service ID, I'm calling it default. We will see in a future video what it's uh, service ID and the model ID is GPT-40. And this is a very basic configuration where I'm only giving to semantic kernel the configuration of a chat model GPT-40 in this situation. Now pressing play, it immediately executes. And then it came to the latest part when I, came, when I call kernel builder build to create a kernel object. And from the kernel object, I can simply use invoke prompt async that is simply accepting a string and it in turn will call a, a large language model, my large language model configure. So the question is, which is the capital of France? Answer as a pirate Barbossa. And then you can write directly the result. Pressing play, we'll see that you have trace info. You have all the information traced by the internal execution of semantic kernel. And this is because I've added logging in console and at the bug level. And after all the trace of the internal execution, so you can see uh, rendered prompt, chat history, prompt tokens, completion tokens. So you look at what is happening, how um, semantic kernel is interacting with your large language model. And at the end, you get the answer of the model. I am seeking blah, 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 blah. Okay. So it is indeed answering as Pirate Barbossa. And so as you can see, it's very, very simple to uh, create a kernel object and call the uh, large language model. And this is nice because with very, very few line of code, you don't need to learn API. You don't need to learn anything to interact with the large language model with GPT-40. You can simply configure kernel memory and ask the invoke prompt to sync. And the takeaway of this uh, video is, first of all, if you use a .m file, e your credentials are safe because my .m file is outside folder monitored by Git. So it's outside of my repository. It is shared by all my project and they can be used also in Python. And the reason why I'm using Azure OpenAI and not the OpenAI API is because I like the stricter license agreement that I have with Microsoft with Azure OpenAI. So Microsoft is assuring me that 
they are not gonna store my data. They're not gonna use my data to train the model. Also, I can deploy in European Union data center because this API was actually executed by a deployment in uh, Sweden. So I can choose my Azure data center uh, that is nearest my application and also as a European Union locality for GDPR. And also, if you're going to use Azure OpenAI, you see that you have uh, more control over content filtering. And if you are uh, working constantly with both the API, uh, you will notice that Microsoft version, the Azure OpenAI version, is usually more stricter for content filtering for harm, violence, and it's, in my opinion, more production ready for a company. And let's conclude this video. I'm waiting for the next one.